Rappers, I got to ask an important question this week. Someone wanted to know, should I purchase a feature from a rapper that's on the come up and is it really that beneficial? Let's talk about it. Rappers and producers, mostly independent rappers and producers I'm talking to today, should you purchase a feature from somebody that is on the come up? You know, it, it's not really hard to see somebody that's on the cusp of something. You know, when you think about somebody's rise, you know, it may start off with a song that starts taking off locally. And once the song starts taking off locally, they may start bumping shoulders with people who are more, you know, reputable within your city. Maybe it's people who are more influential. All of a sudden, their song's getting played on your biggest social influencer in your neighborhood. And all of a sudden, this person is starting to be in a lot of conversations, a lot of you know, barbershop conversations, this person becomes the hot topic. And even though they're not known on the grand level in your particular neighborhood, they got that thing on fire, right? And you see that, you see that rise. And you're looking at them and you're like, okay, I'm not quite on the rise like that yet, but as, as you're moving off, I probably need to tap your shoulder and be like, hey fam, uh, uh, how much you charge for features though? And then you're thinking to yourself, the person says, you know what, you from my city, I charge you three racks for it. You thinking of clutch the pearls, three racks? Lord, I mean, you're worth it, but I know you're gonna be worth it, but man, should, should, I, should I do that? You know, when it comes to whether or not you should do that, I have to leave that up to you. For me, there's been situations where I've looked at an artist that I knew for a fact was getting ready to take off, right? And I looked and I said, you know, I'm gonna do my best to become of some kind of service to them. Before I pay, I wanna be of some service to them. Me being a producer, I can be of service to them. So maybe if I come to them and I say, you know what? In my mind, I'm thinking, this is not a money play. This is me investing into their brand so that hopefully they think about me when they're in that position. That doesn't always work. We talked about before, where some rappers will take them beats that you provide and be like, peace. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, you're really establishing a relationship with them. You're really showing up to the studio session. You're really going in there and taking a chance. Look, you can't be mad when you take a risk and it bites you in the ass. This is part of risk taking. You know, it's like producers who are afraid of losing money when they, when they put promotion up. Look, you can't be afraid of that. It's a part of the business. Yes, will you lose money? Yes, will it hurt like hell? But you can't be afraid of that. So in this particular situation, what you're doing is taking a risk. You're taking a chance. Even if you're paying that particular artist on the rise, you're taking a chance. You're taking a risk. Make an educated guess about whether that risk is worth it. So that being said, look at that artist and really start to have conversations with them. Have some kind of communication if you can. If you start to notice this person is like really dismissive and they're not really trying to mess with you or they're just kind of giving you the cold shoulder, you probably shouldn't put your money on that. Not just because it'll cost you, but because that person probably is not going to rise as high as you think they might rise. At some point in time, somebody going to... <laughs> slap them, I don't know. Somebody gonna shut them down, you know, because people do not operate like that and on the high level. They don't operate like that. They know that you have to be of service to people in order to have a sustainable, sustainable career. So that being said, you meet somebody on the rise, really pay attention to how they're treating your business. That's one. Two, is it beneficial? It can be beneficial. If you have an opportunity where you know, I say for instance, I had an opportunity where, you know, I had a verse from a very young K dot. Right. He rapped over a song with me and I was like, yo, I can't even believe like he was at that time a local legend already. But I was like, I can't believe I got this song with him. I still got the song. Here's what happened. Some guy named Dr. Dre went on the radio and was like, yo, I co-signed this kid. And then after that, his life changed like crazy. He was already on the rise, but that was just like a boost. That was just like, he's out of here. So then when I had the conversation with some of the higher reps, like, yo, can I release this song? They were like, Unfortunately, you can't because we got some things in negotiation with the label and you know, at this point in time, because you didn't pay for it, that is not something we can relinquish the power off of. So unfortunately, you can't drop it. So here I was with this verse from the biggest rapper, still got the verse from the biggest rapper in the game that I can't do nothing about. Had it since 2010. But that's my point is that I saw the potential in that. I knew that guy was gonna be amazing. I knew he was gonna be, he already in my book is a legend. You know, and I, and, and I saw that and I said, yo, I have to get a record in with him and I got it, but I couldn't utilize it. Would that have been beneficial to maybe, you know, a, a project that I released? Hell yes. 
Can you imagine now the amount of people who would have been searching, you know, through YouTube and found, you know, that song because they were looking for some more rare Kendrick Lamar songs? They would have found my song within that. But unfortunately, because I moved too slow on it, unfortunately, because I waited way too late, that opportunity passed. So I'm telling you, really think about if it's worth the risk, but don't sit there and overthink the process and then have the opportunity fly right by you. It won't be the last opportunity you have without a doubt. You're supposed to work your whole career and put yourself on and be in a position where you get the phone call from who you want to work with. That's what you should, your ultimate goal should be. But if that situation does pass you by, that's fine. But understand there's a specific and a very delicate timing that goes into that. Once again, it's another perspiration. Hey, doodle, if you need some more of this juice, please subscribe to the channel below. Be a part of the notification guy. Hey, hey, Richie, why you ain't? You don't be dancing, y'all. <laughs> Thank you to all my Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash Curtis King. I appreciate you supporting your boy all the way here to the end of this goal. We are like right there at the finish line. Thank you so much. Doubling back on the topic, should you pay somebody that is on the rise? Look, you got to determine whether it's worth the risk, but not overthink it and just go for it if you think it's worth it. You never know what it can mean for you from, from an SEO standpoint or from a search standpoint when people see your name associated with one of the biggest artists out of this region because that person went even further than what you thought they were going to go. You never know, but you got to take that risk sometimes. And you can't be afraid to spend some money and then have to eat that money. Maybe you spend three racks on that guy on the rise and then he catch one case and then he's in jail for 40 years. And then you're like, oh, fam. What's up with my three racks? Look, you had to take that chance because your career is worth it to you. In this life, you cannot be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. I'm Curtis King of CurtisKingBeast.com. When I listen to you, it's a liability. Cause you be mentally killing my inner energy. So I'm concealing my feelings before you injure me.